Hey, what's happening, everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad here in the Dirty Dirty in Alabama with another video. Uh, today, I was talking with another crafter um, earlier today, and we was talking about some uh, tooling and beveling work uh, with the Sheridan designs and different things like that and how to make the artwork really pop. So... This is what sparked this video today. So we're going to take this all the way back to the beginning process, especially if you guys want to start drawing your own artwork, which will save you a lot of money from going out buying uh, a, a lot of pre-drawn artwork from other uh, crafters out there, which there's nothing wrong with that. I myself have done the same thing. I bought patterns from uh, everybody from Al Stalmer all the way up to uh, Jim Linnell and even my most recent purchase was Steve Yizik. I think that's his name, Yizik. Uh, uh, I just love those those daisy prints. I'm not a, uh, some of you guys know my story already. Up until about a year ago, I was not drawing at all. Uh, all of, pretty much all of my work prior to 2017 was all uh, downloaded pictures or packages and patterns that I had purchased from other crafters. But then I took a class uh, on Sheridan design, Sheridan drawing. First, I did my research. And then within, the, and within that research, I found out that there were actually four other more popular, or three other more popular designs that predated Sheridan. So, and Sheridan, basically known from a guy who was in Sheridan, Wyoming, pretty much, uh, it was associated with, the, I think his name is King, uh, but uh, there were some other crafters that was out there that was doing some other things too. One guy was in Carson City, another guy was in Brasalis, uh, California, another guy was in uh, Oregon. Uh, another guy was even in Kansas. And the design and then the artwork became popular because it was associated with saddles. So, and you could pretty much tell who you bought your saddle from, from the artwork or the detailing of the work that was done to the saddle. Hence, after all of that time had passed and some of those companies had faded away, uh, I think Vercel is, is still in business in Southern California. I think I'm saying that right. But um, he's still in business or somebody is still carrying on the um, his the, the tooling or the art form. And I myself am more actually partial to the Vassalis artwork than I am the Sheridan artwork. One, it's not too many crafters that are out there in the leather world today that are doing that particular art design, uh, as opposed to everybody jumped onto the Sheridan bandwagon. So to kind of set myself apart from other crafters that are out there, I myself just personally chose on my own to go more toward uh, that particular artwork. And now I'm crafting and honing my skills to do that. Now, don't get me wrong. At the same time, I also learned how to do sharing. So, which, uh, and I paid good money to learn how to draw, which was a skill that was never mine. I mean, I couldn't even draw a stick man, you know, but um, I, I, I humbled myself to finally just say, look, I need to know how to do this art form if I'm going to take my craft into the next level. Uh, stamps are great. And you guys have already known from past or previous uh, videos, um, stamping was my wheelhouse. But I did know, uh, talking with my business coach, he was like, look, I had to get better. And I'm like, how do you get better with stamps? And he was just like, you got to get better. And that's what I'm telling you guys out there now. I mean, stamps can take you only so far, even with the multitude of stamps that are out there. And uh, even a lot of new stamps are being made constantly but stamp work can only get you to a certain ceiling and then if but if you want to get better and you want to really push and uh, command those higher prices 
uh, that's out there in the leather world today, you're going to have to learn to start doing your own artwork. That way you can claim in every piece that you do that it is 100% authentic, original, and it, when you put your maker's mark on there, people, your customers or your clients will know that that is a 100% original piece, no copies, none of that stuff. But in order to do that, you have to get your old artwork. Well, I'm sorry, you guys have watched me long enough to know. I guess maybe I just talked myself to sleep or something. But anyway, uh, but today what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you basically what I was taught uh, as far as doing um, the uh, your artwork. And I'm just going to stick with the Sheridan design and, and pretty much give you some tools and tips along the way uh, of how you can shorten that time and to make your transition to learning the art form a little bit easier. And it's the same things that I have learned, The same, some of the same things that I'm still doing today uh, as far as to make it easier and better for me. So, first thing first is, I would encourage you guys, uh, don't go out and spend five, six, seven dollars on some art pencils. Please don't do that. You guys have followed me long enough to know that I'm all about saving you money to maximize your profits on the back end. So the more money that you save up front, the more money you will make on the back end. So first thing first is these little pencils here. You can go and buy these. And I think I bought a box of eight at the dollar store. And these are the real legit art pencils and these are something I've, I've used them so long primer craft primer craft they don't come with an eraser so you will have to turn go probably on, on the same aisle in your area on the same aisle and get you a box of eraser heads that's one or you can also do like I did. I bought the big granddaddy and then I actually cut this is this was all on the same eraser, but I bought the big long eraser for the same dollar and I just cut it in half, cut parts off as I needed. So uh the more I erased on that little nub, then I'll cut me another chunk off and then I'll use that too as well. So or if you can find you a box of pencils, this is how I first started. You know, you can buy your, find your box of pencils. The reason why I won't tell you guys to go out and get the number two lead pencils is when you're drawing your own artwork, you're going to be doing a lot of erasing, a lot of erasing. And the bad point about bad part about number two pencils uh, is they're very hard to erase. Very hard to erase. You can still see some of the lines and stuff that are on there unless you're just drawing very, very light. But with the art pencils, um, now you can go to Hobby Lobby or Wally World or whatever and get the more higher costing pencils. I've, I've known some crafters, they'll even use the blue uh, art pencils. Uh, I forget what proper name that they call, but the, the lead is blue. You can do that if you want to. It's just a matter at this particular point whether you buy a, uh, a box of eight art pencils at the dollar store or buy you a box of 16 uh, regular number two pencils. You just want to get the process started. Uh, secondly, um, don't limit yourself to a, uh, a art book. Now, I have an art book. Uh, over here as well. Not going to even lie to you. I wind up buying some and that's over the period of time that I gotten better with my artwork. I wanted to start keeping some of the, uh, I want really, I wanted to keep all of the artwork that uh, I, I was, I was drawing. And uh, you never know, and my art teacher, Didi, so if you guys have never been on to D&D Leather's website, check out Didi. Giving a shout out to Didi. Didi has brought me a long way as far as my artwork and my crafting. But um, you can check out some of her stuff. Her, her insight on how to manipulate the eye as far as uh, doing pictorials and leather work is just like second to none. I, I And I've been around for a long time. But anyway, um, 
you don't have to go and get those art books. It will be more cost efficient and cheaper to go out and buy you a 500 pack of copying paper. 500 pack of copy of paper just to start out because you're literally, you will literally go through a lot of paper. Mess ups, erases, sometimes you erase so much uh, it starts to break away the integrity of the paper. And believe me, take it from somebody who's already gone through it. Uh, get you a, a, a pack of the big, big pack of copy of paper. It's like 327 at Walmart as opposed to a $5 drawing book that only has 40 sheets in it. You see what I'm saying? So save yourself the money on the front end to maximize your profits on the back end. Now, also I want to throw into that is you can still transfer your artwork from regular copying paper. So it's not going to stop or, or hurt anything to transfer that. And then later on down the road, you guys, excuse me, because I forgot a piece real quick. Um, invest in you about three yards of transfer film. Just to get started. Invest in you about three yards of transfer film. You can get this. Now, I buy mine from Tandy because I haven't found anybody who's cheaper than Tandy. On your transfer film now I do know there are some crafters out there that use vellum paper uh, again very costly uh, and you're only going to get maybe a pack of 25 maybe 40 sheets into that vellum book and then vellum the thing with vellum is you can only uh, transfer is it's, it's, to me it's not as heavy as the tracing film but you can get you a get you buy you three yards of these uh, tracing film from Tandy and that, that will save you some money too on the back end too and the great part about that and then I'll show you guys a little trick later on down the road with the transfer where you can actually hold and keep the that artwork now so first thing first and what we're going to do today uh, I want to get off into not something so much as eccentric or as detailed, but we're going to go with just a basic doing a a belt uh, drawing. We're going to lay out how we do the, how I do my scrolls, um, as well as uh, uh, going into the deep the, the doing the flowers and the leaves and all that stuff into the Sheridan design. Now, this is not going to be just one video. This is going to be probably one part of many because from start to finish so now you have to follow along closely because uh as i might be interjecting some other videos in between this series of videos just because when the ideas hit me i want to go ahead and put them on film so you guys can can continuously do that and then we'll pick right back up with going right back into the sheridan design so pay attention to the titles of how i list these uh, until we get through uh, from beginning to end. So the first thing I would tell you to do is in for in order to get caught up and prepped on this is while you're at the dollar store buying your pencils and your eraser erasers and your your copying paper, go ahead and snag you a 50 cent sheet of poster paper. 50 cent sheet of poster paper. And the reason being is because um, not just on the belt uh, belt design or belt, but when you get off into other projects, because this, this technique that I'm going to show you guys, what was taught to me, it will apply to any piece that you guys decide to do. So if you decide to move on to do purses, wallets, whatever the case may be, you can use this. So go ahead and get you uh, a sheet of poster paper. And what you're going to cut out are circles. And I use these even to this day. This is my three inch circle. And this is my two and a half inch circles. And I have some circles that all the way down to one inch. Um, and the reason being is because, um, well, one, again, I'm still cut you out some circles <laughs> in other words now there's a little tool that you can purchase on 
um, Amazon uh, to where it'll cut your circles out for you. And you can just move the little tape measures. It's kind of like a little protractor or compass, I guess you could say. And you turn it in a circle and then it'll cut out your two inch circles. Now, me being the frugal person that I am, I said frugal, not cheap, frugal person that I am, um, I measured out two by two. And then I uh, came back with my, with my compass, uh, compass or wing divider and I trace that into the postal paper itself so I can make sure that I had my right distance and dimensions and things like that which you can, again you can buy a compass at Dollar Tree for a dollar so you're not even going to spend 10 bucks on all of these supplies and stuff that I'm telling you guys about and um, I just took a regular old pair of scissors and cut out my own circles out of the poster board. Right behind that, I bought me some cellophane tape, still at Dollar Tree. So we got $1.50, $1, $1. So that's one, two, three, and 50 cent poster board. So we spent $3.50. Now you can take the remaining dollar and a half or um, uh, what I said, three dollars, and go buy you a ream of pack of copying paper, which you can shop around. Maybe it might be a little cheaper in your area, wherever you guys are, and buy you a pack of copying paper. Now, what we do with the cellophane tape? The cellophane tape to preserve my circles. I wrap them, and you guys can see that tape line right down the middle. I covered them in cellophane tape. So I can keep continuously using these over and over again. And this poster paper is about a year old, right when I first started drawing. So you can use these over and over again. Now, another thing is I cut out my leaves. And I have leaves of different styles, different uh, whatever. I really don't know what plant or what acorn or whatever this leaf goes to. It is really just how I, I how, what I see because I'm, I'm not a gardening person, so I don't know what leaves go to what flowers and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, depending on what flower that I lay down, so I'm assuming that I'll put this with a lily or angel bell flower or uh, whatever the case may be or anything that's in your gardening, uh, your yard. I will put this particular leaf. Now I have those who do have other leaves out there that will go with an oak leaf. And I'm pretty sure I have some artwork that's out there that have some oak leaves <laughs> to, to some uh, gardenias or something. I don't know. But uh, it just depends on really what you as a crafter see. Uh, but like I said, I also uh, took these uh, out of my poster board, traced them out, and then cut them out and then co covered them in uh, the cellophane tape too as well. So to preserve those, because I knew that I'll be using these over and over and over and over and over again. And then I keep them all in a folder to where they'll stay nice, dry, won't get wrinkled and creased and all of that kind of stuff. So I keep them going. But boys and girls, uh, I didn't want this video to get off too long, but like I said, this is gonna be one of many so you know what supplies you need to get you know where you can get them and we haven't even spent ten dollars on supplies now you can go out and do what you want to i can't tell you what you want what you what you should do what you ought to do none of that we all grown but as far as what i did and just so you guys know that i don't i practice what i preach i still have even though I have the art book and all of that stuff over there and, and all that great stuff. And the only thing that I upgraded on was my pencils. And you can see this is still a full box of pencils. I don't know if you guys can hear that. But this is still a full box of pencils. That's the only thing that I upgraded on was because, and that was after I found out that writing, drawing with a number two, a regular number two pencil is very hard to erase. But they do have come with erasers and you guys can see that you will erase a lot. So make sure you get your big boy. Um, now, so 
What I want to do first is just to, to finish off this video because we're at the 20 minute mark already. Oh, oh yeah, and you'll need a ruler. Uh, and then I'll show you guys too uh, in the next video um, how we're going to lay out, how I lay out uh, my base um, for my, my sharing the design on. Now we're strictly doing belts on this one and maybe as we progress later on as time allows, then I'll go in and show you how how I uh, do the circles, how I use the circles and how we connect, how I connect all of the, the patterns together. So the first thing is let me angle this camera down so you guys can see what, what I'm doing. What I'm doing. Okay. And here we go. So what I'm going to do, and let me adjust this light. I think you guys can see that a little bit better. And we're just going to lay this out just like a regular belt. So if you're doing a three inch belt, or let's just stick with a regular size or a normal size. And uh, so we're gonna do, I'm gonna do this one an inch and three quarters. So we're gonna do an inch and three quarter belt. Not quite a full two inches, but an inch and three quarters. or three-fourths, as they say, you know, in the South, we say three-quarters. So, all right, and that's pretty much where we're gonna go. So the first stage to this is, and what I've learned, or what Dee Dee taught me was, the secret to Sheridan is, it's a constant S pattern with no flat spots. So, and now you guys are getting a head start from where I started because I drew these S's for at least two weeks. Just to make sure you can draw an S without any flat spots. And what that means is it's a constant curve. You should not have any flat spots at all anywhere, not even in the curve of the S. So here again, where it starts to straighten out right here, I'm gonna come back and erase that. And if you guys had these drawing pencils, you'll see how, how clean it erases. So I'm gonna actually have to go up here. And for some reason I do it better from, from the bottom part. And you'll see me a lot too recut uh, drawing from two different sides now that was works best for me that that's what works best for me is drawing from multiple angles because i can see it and being left-handed sometimes it's hard to see on the other side of your hand so you guys out there who are right-handed have an advantage because you can see what you're drawing while you're drawing it. Now I've been drawing this for so long now, I can see on the paper where and how my S's are going to connect. And you'll, you'll, you guys will eventually get to that point too once you keep drawing. And the thing to that is to draw every day. Draw something every day doesn't make any difference what it is but you want to and you guys are already seeing this a lot of erasing but you want to draw something every day and you want let's see and that's what i'm saying so i'll start here and then i'll come back here just to make sure that everything stays rounded mm -mm. that's the trick to share it, it is a non-stop S with no flat spots. It shouldn't have any flat spots. Now, in between time, while I'm working on the next video, and you guys can see that, I hope you can see that. In between time, 
um, and seeing this is a, even though it's uh, this part of the loop is bigger than the other one, that's fine because it this will tell me which end my stem will start to flow from. And as it gets bigger here, I know automatically this is where my flower is going to wind up. Now, how do we put this big YS into this inch and three quarter with belt? So basically what I'm gonna do is cut this S in half. If I was gonna make a dollar sign, I'm gonna use this portion or this part of it in this part of it. And basically what it'll do is coming into, I'm gonna curve it just like this. So it's st we're still with, still with my S pattern or my S shape that is non-flat, which is the the ideal thing of what we're trying to do. Now, there, now again, there might be some other crafters out there that'll tell you a completely different way. This is what works best for the cowboy. And this is what I found to help me get to where I need to be with my artwork. Now, and I would even tell you guys to do that yourselves. You want to learn from multiple people. There's nothing wrong with learning from multiple people, learning multiple techniques, learning different things. And then you connect that and put that with into your personality to where it'll work for you. So that that's the only way that you're going to have individualism or, or your or your own identity into this this uh into this craft. Now let's just take um let's see Jim Linnell for instance. I don't think Jim will be offended by this video. But now Jim is known for certain artwork in this leather world. And even if you take a class from Jim, which I would encourage you to do. Uh, you take a uh, class from Jim and you, you you do Jim's techniques over and over and over and over and over again. So when you do decide to step out and do your own artwork or, or do your own, uh, you say, okay, I, I've learned from Jim for six months. And then you start drawing these things. Guess whose artwork you're going to start drawing? Jim Linnell's. And there's nothing wrong with that because Jim Linnell artwork sells. But you, as an individual crafter, you don't want to sell pieces that look like Jim Linnell. Or now you can say the, the artwork was inspired by Jim Linnell. And because, but you can't, uh, uh, but a lot of people will start buying from you because it looks just like something that Jim had drawn. And it's the same way with a lot of other successful crafters out there. Now, here we go. This is one. Now what I'm going to do is come from under my end and I'm going to do the same exact thing here. No flat spots. I don't want any flat spots. So, and you will see as you draw where your flat spots are. And then if you go back over those, you will see a little arc over the original part that you draw. And then you can just go back and erase it. But you want to keep that S shape with no flat spots. So basically, this is what you'll have. I think you guys can see that. Now, I'm going to cut this one off right here. Uh, let's get the camera back. Hang on right. Whew. Okay. I'm going to cut this one here at this point because uh, it's enough to get you guys started and enough, um, I guess you can say homework would be the best way to do it. And uh, we'll take up with this one in another video. Why is my camera sideways? Uh...
<laughs> okay, but we'll take up with this one at another time on another video, and then we'll go through, and then I'll show you guys how we'll start connecting all of the stems and, and things like that, and I'll show you, well, actually, what, what I do is I put my flowers first. I know some people don't like that, but it's what works for me. You know, hey, this is the Leather Cowboy right here from Red Leather Crafters. You know, I'll see you guys on the other side. I got to get back to work.